All right, back to September the 30th, 1994. This won't take long, and it is so powerful. Only the one station, little rented studio, struggling to pay the light bill. Only a handful of people on staff, and they weren't making very much money either. But it was at midnight when all of heaven broke loose. Just like in Acts 16, 25, at midnight, God came down and broke Paul and Silas out of a Philippian jail. And it was a suddenly, somebody say suddenly, the suddenly visitation, just like on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all of the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. I went into a trance on live television for over two hours. I'm going to show you the picture in a minute. When you watch the video, which I hardly ever, I've only shown it maybe a handful of times since 1994. It's so sacred to me. You can't see me moving. You can't see me breathing. I look like a dead man. I'll at least show you the picture. Can we show the picture of me up there? There I am in the trance for over two hours like that. And you say, what happened? I was caught up into heaven. I wished I could tell you that the angels welcomed me and the pearly gate swung open wide and I walked down the streets of gold and saw the uh, crystal river. No, I didn't get to go in, but Jesus met me outside, just outside the pearly gates. And the colors that I saw, the sounds that I heard, the fragrances that I smell were indescribable. And when Jesus spoke to me, he didn't move his mouth. I did not hear him audibly, but I heard him in my mind just as clear, total understanding as anything could ever be. And this is some of what he said. Now, remember at this time, we only had the one TV station. The first thing that he said to me is this, if you will not be ashamed of the Holy Spirit, and if you will promote revival, then I will give you many TV stations. I will put you on many cable systems around the world and satellite systems around the world. And then the second thing he said, now think about this. I never even thought about building a network at that time, Pastor. I, it's not like it was already a dream in my heart. I hadn't thought about it. I didn't even want to build a TV network. That's a lot of hard work. So I didn't have any thoughts about it, but God did. God did, and that's why he was going ahead and showing me our future. And now... Daystar is the largest Christian television network in America, the largest in the world. As Pastor Rod said, it can reach 5 billion people. And instead of one TV station, we have 100 TV stations now. And I want to show you the satellite map. We were not on any satellites because we weren't a network. And now look at all of these satellites, 20-something satellites, which totally cover the globe. God kept his promise. And here's the second thing that Jesus told me when I was in the trance there at heaven, which is the theme of my message here tonight. He said, tell Everybody, wherever you go, that if they want to be touched by me like I have touched you, then there are three things they must do. Number one, they must become hungry and thirsty for more of me. I'm going to tell more about this in a moment. Number two, they must get into my presence. And number three, they must completely yield to me. In other words, let down the bucket. 
So point number one, short, simple, and sweet. I want you to write this down. You must become hungry and thirsty. When you get hungry enough, you will eat. Young people, when you get thirsty enough, you will drink. Matthew 5 and 6 again, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. You got to be hungry. You got to be thirsty. How do you know when you're hungry and thirsty enough? I'll tell you how. When you're seeking God, that you get to the point, Miss Angelique, that you don't care what you look like, you don't care what you sound like, you don't care what you act like, and you don't care what anything, anybody thinks about it. You say, I must have more of God. I'm hungry for God. I'm thirsty for God. When you get to that place like that, when you become so desperate that you say, I must have more of you, more of your presence, more of your power, more of your spirit. I'm desperate, Lord, for you. But you don't seek after manifestations or feelings. You seek after more of God. Point number two, write this down. Again, short, simple, and sweet. Point number two, you must enter into his presence. And the one way to do that, you must create an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit is welcome. So young people, if you're listening to beatbox music and rock and roll, and, and I'm not preaching against that, but I'm saying if that's all you're ever listening to and you're feeding your spirit what the world has come up with instead of what God has come up with, let me tell you a clue about the Holy Spirit. He is a gentleman by nature. So he's not going to impose himself. He's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to interrupt you. But when you create an atmosphere where he's welcome, put on a CRC DVD and listen to it or an MP3 or however, podcast, and listen to it and let your heart be filled with the glory of God. You must spend time with the Holy Spirit. You must develop a praise zone. And sometimes you have to soak in his presence until you reach the saturation point. How do you know when it's the saturation point? You see, this glass is not full. It's almost full. How would we know when it is full is when it's running over. When the glory of God becomes so great in your life, it runs over. It touches others. It influences others. Others see it and notice it, and they're impacted by the Holy Spirit in you. So don't be quick to leave your prayer closet. Don't be quick to leave your secret place. Don't be quick to leave the altar in the church. Finally, point number three, write this down. Learn how to completely yield to God. You know what most people do? They sit around and they wait on God to touch them and then they will react. Some even have the attitude, bless me if you can. And they're looking at the preacher like, what do you got? Show me your stuff. But God is not waiting to touch you. God is waiting for you to touch him. Just like the Bible says, uh, Matthew 9, 21, the woman with the issue of blood, for she said within herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. He doesn't have to lay hands on me. He doesn't have to call me out. He doesn't have to give out a message in tongues over me and then interpret it. All I've got to do is touch him and the glory's in him. The power's in him. The anointing is in him. And if I touch him, then I'll get the anointing in my life that I so desperately need.